Welcome back. We are now in question number four of the senior certificate, national senior certificate to May June 2024. Trying to go through the questions together so that we can understand them better. We are given two trolleys A and B of mass 3.2 kilogram and 2.6 kilogram respectively are held at the rest on a straight horizontal frictionless track with a compressed spring between them as shown in the diagram below. Fine. Then after the the trolleys are released, the spring extends to its natural length, then falls onto the track. Uh, the trolley A now moves with a constant velocity of 0 0.4 meters per second, I mean that A starts to have momentum, because before momentum, when they were stationary, then momentum before collision in this case is 0 to the left, and then while B moves with a constant uh, unknown velocity to the right, we know that the momentum of B is the same as the momentum of A. Trolley B reaches uh, the end of the track after 1.3 seconds. Yes, something uh, now we have to find the distance there, obviously. Uh, the first question states the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Then you can just state that one is just uh, the examination guideline. Say the total, total linear momentum, linear momentum. Uh, of an isolated system isolated system or in an isolated system an isolated system is conserved remember if we are defining the principle of conserving mechanical energy we'll just remove this one and put mechanical energy total mechanical energy of an isolated system is conserved then that's how the two definitions are similar and then the next question says calculate the distance traveled by ball b in 1.3 seconds then you must first find the velocity after collision of b obviously then using momentum approach then we'll please remember that this is the first step that you have to do when calculate when using momentum it's very easy stress-free we know before collision they were stationary after collision, then now A is moving at 0 0.4. Then we'll multiply that one. We can take that one as a positive, no problem, 0 0.4. Therefore, to the right will be negative, obviously. Then the other one will be 2.6 multiplied by VF. Therefore, VF, you'll find it to be negative uh, 0 0.49, which will be now the same as 0 0.49 meters per second to the right because our left was positive yes now the the distance will say from the formula of velocity equals to delta x over delta t therefore it means that now 0 0.49 will be the same as delta x divided by 1.3 seconds therefore delta x will be the same as 0 0.64 meters i think it's relatively easy that way now let's move to 4.3 next question they say yeah, the average force exerted by the extensive spring on each trolley while they were in contact with the spring was 4.2 remember the average force there's only one formula in this section that deal with the average force calculate the time it take it took the spring to extend to its natural uh, length. Now, there's only one formula in this section that deals the average force. That's the F net delta T equals to delta P. Fine. And then 4.2 is given. Then we are finding delta T equals to change in momentum. Just choose one. So either you choose A or B, no problem. The change in momentum of the two objects will be the same. So let's take two point, the B now to say 2.6 multiplied by 0 0.49. And then that's the final momentum. The initial is 0 because of stationary. Therefore, delta T will give us 0 0.3 seconds. That's what they want. Very easy question. Now we are coming to 4.4. 4. 4.4 4 now they are telling us to say trolley B is now released by trolley C. It's okay, it's replaced by trolley C, fine, which has a larger mass, underline the larger mass. 
The same compressed spring is placed between the trolleys A and C. The trolleys are then released. The average force exerted by the extended spring on the trolleys uh, remains 4.2 and the same period. I mean that now it tells us that if the impulse is the same, then the change in momentum also will be the same. How does the magnitude of the velocity of trolley C compare to the magnitude of the velocity of trolley B after spring has fallen to the track, right, only greater than, less than, or equal to? Because C has got a greater mass, therefore it means that now the magnitude of the velocity, remember, of the bigger object will be less than. Less than, fine, yes. You get one mark, and then now they say explain. Very simple. Remember we said once the impulse is the same, and that the change in momentum remains the same. Yes. A change in momentum. Momentum. And uh, delta T remains the same. Delta T uh, the same. Is the same. And then once these two remains the same, it means that now the change in velocity, change in velocity uh, of C uh, will be smaller than, will be smaller than, uh, smaller than that of of B uh, since uh, C since mass of C is greater than greater than B that is the thing so big multiplied by small is the same as small multiplied by big it's a math principle that one Let's rush to question number five. I think we have still have good time for this clip. You can do question five. Question five is about work energy and power. Very simple section again. In this case, they're giving us to say a crate of mass 18 kilogram. Initially at rest, slide down frictionless slope from point A to B. Remember when there is no friction, that is grade 10. That is conservation of mechanical energy. Fine. And the crate then moves along a rough horizontal surface from point B towards C. That's when now once it's rough, we're coming to grade 12. We can use uh, energy work energy theorem or work done by non-conservative force there. Now point A is 3 meters above the horizontal surface. See the diagram below. First question, they say state the conservation of mechanical energy same like the previous one in momentum we'll just say the total mechanical energy of an isolated system isolated system is conserved i think the examiner was very generous in this case Asking two similar questions with similar definitions. Now, next question, they'll say, use energy principles only. Uh, do not use kinematic because you can fire, use kinematic and then get the same answer. Use energy principles only to calculate the speed of the crate at point B. Yes, can do that one using energy principles now. Then this will be the case to say, oh, examiner. Let me not disappoint you. This will be the case. Fine. Uh, we know the mechanical energy at the top there initially will be the same as mechanical energy at the bottom of the ramp. Uh, yes, this is the case. Fine. Now from here, substitution. There's no... Uh, potential energy there is 18 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 3 and then whereas kinetic energy is 0 equals to 
potential energy at the bottom is zero and then the kinetic energy with the speed that we are calculating now half of 18 multiplied by vf squared therefore vf equals to 7.67 meters per second very easy point this is grade 10. Next question they say to us, a constant frictional force of 40.6 acts on the crate as it moves from point B towards C. The crate uh, comes to rest at C. That's when now we say we are using work energy theorem. Oh, fine. 5.3, they say define. So they state work energy theorem in weights. Remember, if you don't know what is work energy theorem, go to the formula sheet and then look at this. We will be defining using this formula in this case to say according to this formula the work net becomes now the total work done or the net work done total or net work done work done on an object on an object equal to the change delta is the change in don't forget change in uh, kinetic energy change in kinetic energy of the object kinetic energy of the object object think is very clear fine then let's go to the next question it's uh, now 5.4 in 5.4 they're telling us to say uh, using energy principles only calculate the distance that the crate travel from b to c yes remember there are two you can use either work done by non consecutive forces or use the very same thing uh, work energy theorem which is easier but remember, before you can do this one, it's always advisable to draw a free body diagram. Even if you are not asked, remember, there's a weight and the normal. And the only force acting there now, horizontal, will be the friction. Therefore, the total work done is done by friction. Those then there will be now the work done by friction will be uh, work done by friction equals to half mvf squared minus half mvi squared work done by friction becomes 40.6 multiplied by the delta x that we are calculating cosine of 180 degrees then equals to the final it should be zero because it comes to rest and then the initial will be half of 18 uh, multiplied by the velocity that we found there, 7.67 all squared. If you use your calculator, you will find that now. Delta X equals to 13.03 uh, meters. That is the case. Now we come to 5.5. That's the last question in this. Now they're telling us to say the height of the track is now lowered so that the A is at the vertical height less than 3 meters. The same crate is again released from point A under the same circumstances. Then how will the distance now the traveled now the distance now traveled by the crate along the horizontal surface before it comes to rest compared to the distance calculated? In 5.4, I think this one without any hesitation, you know that the distance will be smaller. Fine, should be smaller than. Smaller than, is just one of the options there. It will be smaller than, they say, right and greater than, smaller than, or equal to. Explain your answer. Two marks there, two points. Now, the mechanical energy at the new A decrease now. Uh, mechanical energy decreases mechanical mm -hmm. energy uh, decreases at a decreases decreases because mechanical energy at a is totally potential then now 
Once that one happens, then the velocity at B will also decrease. And that now the velocity at B uh, also decreases. I think those two will be the two valid points that the examiner will be looking at. Fine. I think uh, this is one of the best questions. Remember in this section, before you can use a work energy theorem, make sure that you draw a free body diagram. That will assist you a great deal to know which forces according to your free body diagram are doing work on the object so that you'll know about the total work done on an object in this case. So I hope it's very clear. Please take care of a work energy theorem and also know that you can also do using the work done by non-conservative forces you will also get the same answer in this case so until the next question let's pause for now